Greetings, Embers, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you would like to learn how to become a member of the channel or would like to buy me a coffee as a special thank you, those links can be found down below. If you are new here and enjoy what you are hearing, or you've been one of the lurkers in the back and haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help push these videos into the algorithm, it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Crazy Neighbors from Hell. Right after this intro a ad will play, I'll read the first story an ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. Quick note, if any of you have experienced crazy neighbors that just drove you batshit crazy and there was nothing you could do about it, please let me know. And if you would be so kind to write it down, I would love to read your stories on the subscriber written stories that is coming out a little bit later. So if any of you are writers, please send me your story to Narrations at gmail.com. I don't judge, all grammatically structure everything, and as well, you will be featured in that subscriber video and your name will appear in the credits. Happy writing, everyone. I hope to hear some really good ones. So, hi. I'm just going to vent about my upstairs neighbors on here. They moved in about half a year ago, and they are the worst people imaginable. In the hallways of our apartment, you typically can't store stuff except plants or decorations. So bikes and trolleys are out of the picture. My neighbors keep a lot of their belongings there. They have three little children, all under school appropriate age. I think one is an infant, a toddler, and a preschooler. Those kids are literal nightmares and their parents are at fault for all of that. Day and night. After like 10 p.m., you hear banging, footsteps, and bouncing balls, and kids screaming the works all the time. There is no point in taking a nap or even relaxing in your own apartment without a child running around screaming and crying. And what do the parents do? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. As I've heard from my mother, the dad gambles to earn money and other reliable methods. The mother, even though I understand three kids can be stressful, is just a screaming bad parent. She trembles with her feet everywhere, and there's no quiet time with those people. I've recorded so many instances of just screaming for minutes and hours, and allegedly, the dad one night beat the mother, and the kids just had to sit there and witness it in pure horror. I am so disappointed in them. I really dislike them. My parents have gone two times to their door to complain, but in a way, that was understanding of their situation, and they offered a peaceful approach. Come two weeks ago, they called the cops on us. For what? Nothing. They falsely accused us of complaining and disrupting their day by threatening them. Turns out, it was another neighbor, and they just wanted to falsely accuse us so they could get an advantage. Well, my sister was visiting, so we had three alibis that no one went to their door. As soon as there's another false complaint, my parents are ready to sue them when the time is right. used to have a neighbor that put their extra bags of garbage out next to mine. This might not seem like such a big deal, but it was nearly every week, and our municipality had a two-bag limit. If you had extra bags, you had to put a sticker on them, purchasable for a mere 25 cents, or they would not be picked up. So, every week I would go out, after putting my two cans out on the curb the night before. 
and I find that there were extra bags of someone else's garbage left behind. It took a long time to determine who the guilty party was, and a couple of extra bags each week added up. I would put on my rubber gloves, open the mystery bags, and sift through them, trying to find identifying information. It was very frustrating, because every week there was nothing. I knew that the culprits had kids, because there were always dirty diapers in the bag. I knew that they were disgusting, lazy sons of bitches, because every bag was full of styrofoam plates and plastic cutlery, which they apparently found more convenient than washing dishes, hence their production of surplus waste every week. This went on for a ridiculously long time. I would sift through their bags, be disappointed, rebag their garbage, and then grudgingly store it in my garage. The only other option being to pay for surplus stickers to take it away. Happily, we didn't have a car, so there was lots of space in the garage. Then, one fine August day, it happened. A bill. A bill was in the garage. A bill with an address on it. Written large. Finally, I knew the household which was responsible for all the extra garbage. The cheapskates that could not find it in their budget to affix the mere 25 cent stickers for their surplus waste, and instead sneakily put it out in their neighbor's yards. They were only three doors down and across the alley. I waited for their van to be gone, and then went over to their gate, opened it, and placed all of their garbage carefully back in their driveway. Since fair is fair, and I was already obliged to handle their garbage and rebag it. I emptied it all out, took my bags back too, leaving their six months extra garbage in a heap in their driveway. I don't think they ever worked out who had had the revenge on them, since it was pretty clear that they were leaving extra bags for everyone who shared an alley with them. But that was the end of their illegal dumping, it does give me more satisfaction to know that, even if I had to handle and rebag their garbage when it was fresh, they had to rebag it after it had been fermenting for months in my non climate control garage. Fucking pricks. There's a particular type of person who seems to feel like they're the only thing standing between society and complete collapse. And about six years ago, my downstairs neighbor was one of them. She was aloof and paranoid, and she'd imagined threats from almost everywhere, which made the fact that she thought of herself as some kind of secret agent all the more annoying. Said neighbor was always trying to find ways of getting me and anyone else whom she thought of as suspicious to move out of the building. She'd stage loud telephone calls with headquarters about the alarming behavior of the other tenants, like my tendency to get home after nine in the evening, which was clearly scandalous and frequently yell at the people who'd stand on the corner to smoke. On one occasion, I heard her shouting at someone over the placement of a flower pot in their window, which was obviously an indication that they were selling drugs. Then, one afternoon, I found this taped to the wall in the stairwell. It was a cutout of the FBI tips and public leads. It was perhaps the most ridiculous attempt at an official document that I have ever seen. And I'm including the time that my friend Jonathan, then nine years old, made a flyer for bodyguard services. The atrocious grammar, poorly photoshopped seal, and distant absence of any legitimate contact information made the notice about as realistic as a scene from NCIS. Furthermore, the reference to the past two years seemed to indicate me as her primary target, since I was, as far as I knew, the only resident who had been there for less time than that. Still, 
Since the notice was clearly meant to scare someone, I decided to return the favor by taking a page out of my neighbor's own playbook and standing outside of her apartment while staging my own fake phone call. You should see the notice. Oh, it's terrible. Uh, yeah, it's like they didn't know that impersonating a federal official is a felony. Anyway, the real FBI are on their way, and they're going to dust for fingerprints. Whoever made that notice is looking at a lot of jail time. I went back inside my apartment after that, and within seconds, I heard my neighbor's door open. There was the sound of hurried footsteps rushing towards the stairwell, followed by an equally hurried retreat. When I went out to check five minutes later, the notice was gone. I've since moved away from that location, but for the rest of the time that I lived there, the lady never bothered me again. I have quite a few stories, but I'm going to stick with one. I think this is the one about a mom, dad, and their son who lived next door. The son would run with other neighbor kids and play in the street, as many kids do, oftentimes. You know, instead of playing in their large, fenced-in yards. One day, I was out in the neighborhood, raking and cleaning up. I saw a large black trash bag filled with trash just laying on the ground near the fence, but on my side of the property. I opened it and looked inside. I saw an empty pack of Newports and other trash. I saw the mother come out into the yard, and I asked her if I could speak with her. She walked over, and I asked if her or anyone threw their trash over onto my property. First, she tried to say how did I know it was theirs, and I said, there's an empty pack of Newports in the bag. I don't smoke, and I don't dispose of my trash like that. Then she said that maybe her son threw it over the fence. I gave it to her over the fence to throw away. She apologized, and I thanked her for acknowledging the situation. I thought that would be the end of it, but bad neighbors know no boundaries. I had my older relatives visiting from out of state. They were taking a nap and I decided to try and take a nap as well on the living room sofa. Her son comes and stands in front of my property and proceeds to throw his ball and it bounces into our yard. He screams for me instead of coming up to knock on the door. He is screaming at the top of his lungs right in front of my property. I'm irritated and half awake because I'm not understanding why the hell he's screaming. So I open the front door and ask what's going on. He says his ball is in my yard. I tell him to go get it, as I'm not going to get his ball. He can enter and get the ball himself. Instead of going to get his ball, he walks off. I'm guessing he wanted me to get it. Nope, not doing it. I close the door and lay back down. Not long after I hear a female voice in front of my property. They both didn't know how to knock on a door, apparently. At this point, I'm annoyed because I have relatives trying to take a nap and I can't get a nap. I open the front door and it's his mom asking why I didn't get her son's ball. I explained that I told her son he could enter my property and retrieve his ball. She literally tried to argue with me over her son not going to retrieve his ball. I'm irritated at this point, because common sense would have been that she could have entered and gotten her son's ball. I close the door, I go back inside, because I'm not making any special effort for them. I ended up throwing the ball over into their yard for my front yard, where the son threw the ball the next day. You would think that would be the last that I would have to hear from those neighbors, but no. I had a pear, a peach, and an apple tree in my yard. The mother noticed and asked me if she could pick some. I tell her that's fine. Go figure she wouldn't come into my yard to knock on my door or to retrieve her son's ball, but she wanted some damn fruit. Thankfully, they eventually moved. They were annoying and rude. 
There were other minor incidents that aren't worth mentioning. I totally understand why most people opt to only speak in passing to their neighbors, if they speak at all. My poor brother went through a shitty neighbor experience, and I live it vicariously whenever I visit his apartment. My brother lived in an apartment complex with his wife and their five-year-old daughter. My brother drove a 2005 Prius, which he received as a hand-me-down from my grandmother once my grandfather bought a new car for her. Across the hall from my brother and his wife, was this redneck who drove a modified diesel engine truck with huge ass wheels, a blinding LED light attached to the roof, and the exhaust ripped off, always dirty and extremely loud. Now, let's get this straight. I don't judge anyone for their vehicle choices. I have owned a 1991 Camry, a 2002 Prius, a manual trans 2009 Cobalt, and a manual trans-diesel engine, Ford F-150. I'm just telling you this because the whole craziness of this experience was driven, but um, psh, catch my drift, by my brother's Prius. It started with the neighbor, always, every day, parking his truck to the left of my brother's Prius, with less than an inch to spare between the cars so that my brother had to crawl into the passenger side just to get to the driver's seat. Even if my brother got home after the guy parked his truck, the guy would go outside and reposition his truck to block my brother's door. My brother tolerated it because he and I are both somewhat agreeable and avoid conflict unless necessary. It made him grumpy, but he toughed it out. Once he came out and noticed a yellowy substance all over his roof of the Prius, which smelled awful, everyone at his work noticed it. We, his family, noticed it too. He had to go through a car wash quite a few times to get rid of it. We assume a stink bomb was dumped all over his car. Hmm, I wonder who did it. One day, he backed his car out of his spot and his tire popped. A nail was propped up against his tire so that when he backed up, the nail would pierce the rubber. Gee, how did that happen? Then the redneck started leaving notes on my brother's car. It usually said something along the lines of Prius, F-A-G, or Libtard, P-U-S-S-Y. My brother kept these notes and took a picture of the parking job and reported it to the landlord. The landlord said... I'll take care of it. Well, suffice it to say, nothing happened. A week or so after reporting it, my brother walked out to find FAG keyed onto the hood of his car. My brother went to his landlord and said, if you don't take care of this, I'm getting the police involved. Well, through conversation, my brother found out that the redneck's girlfriend was the landlord's daughter. They were both living there for like a tenth of the price and were not good tenants. So my brother said, are you going to solve this for me? And the landlord basically shrugged her shoulders. He and his wife immediately got with a real estate agent and moved into a house three months later. So in a way, my brother and his wife and their daughter got away from a terrible situation that could have escalated to a violent situation and lived a better life in their own house. But another way of looking at it is the redneck won the battle. He acted like a total dickbag and got away with it, and the Prius FAG had to move out his family because there weren't any consequences to his actions. There have been maybe 10 people in my life I've wanted to strangle with my own hands, until the life left their eyes. That redneck is number one. Ooh, 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 ooh. I do, I do have a story for you. Okay, here goes. Well, I've had two. 
One was notorious for calling the cops on me for whatever reason. Yeah, after about the fifth time, he stopped. He still tried hassling me from time to time. The second neighbor, I really didn't know her, but it doesn't mean she wasn't horrible towards me. I had a German Shepherd lab mix named Moose. This dog was not only smart, but well behaved. We trained to be a search and rescue team. In 2010, we went to Haiti after the earthquake. That spring and summer, I was still dealing with issues from that myself. I began to ride my bike as part of my therapy. I would typically ride between 30 and 60 miles at least once a week. This lady would stare at me as I drove past her house. Whatever. Then, when I would return, she would do the same thing. She never said anything to me. I would wave, and, of course, she wouldn't wave back. When my garden exploded with fruits and vegetables, I would give them away to my neighbors. I even offered some to the guy who called the cops on me. So I loaded up my car and drove to this lady's house. I knocked on the door, and as I opened my mouth to ask if she wanted some fresh fruit and vegetables, she began accusing me of casing her house. I finally explained that I came by to offer her some fruits and vegetables from my garden. She screamed, No solicitations! and slammed the door in my face. I went home and was loading up some more to take to my food pantry when a deputy showed up at my house. The deputy told me in laughter to quit casing her house and then ask if he could get some tomatoes. I let him get whatever he wanted and we left. That weekend, I noticed a few family members move in next door to me. I took a box of what I grew over with moose. I introduced the both of us. I offered to help and they graciously declined and thanked me for what I brought. About an hour later, I get a phone call from the sheriff's office. I get a report of three kids missing and possibly in a cornfield. The address was next door, and it was my new neighbor's two kids and a friend of theirs. I grab my vest and Moose's leash, and after getting a scent, we take off into the field. At a jog, we manage to find the three boys, and instead of walking back the way we came, I decided to walk out of the field to the closest road. As we exited the field, we ended up in Crazy Lady's yard. I realized I had forgotten my phone. So I figured depending on where we were at, we would either walk home or I would ask someone to call the dispatcher and let them know where we were. I didn't need to ask because Crazy Lady had already called 911 and reported an adult, three kids, and a vicious dog attempting to break into her house. I guess the dispatcher said that she would send somebody because she hung up the phone. She stood there gloating like she would see us go to jail or something for the rest of our lives. The same sheriff's deputy who had told me to stop casing her house pulls up along with an SUV with the parents. Parents run up and grab their kids and give them the biggest hugs. They leave and the lady begins to lose her freaking mind. The deputy asked if I wanted to ride home and I said yes. Crazy Lady went off on the deputy for not arresting me and also for not confiscating Moose. The deputy looked at her and said since we were performing duties in which we were considered essential for the life and safety of others, he legally could not arrest us for trespassing. A few days later, a detective came by to investigate a complaint the lady had made about that incident. As we talked, I heard a car door slam, and then I noticed the crazy lady in the backyard with a plastic bag. The detective went out to confront her, and in the bag was a bunch of dead wild birds. During the course of the investigation, it was discovered she had poisoned these birds, and she collected them and froze them. She claimed that since my dog and I were a menace to the area, it was her duty to see us hauled off. Come to find out, she was actually crazy and off of her meds.
Hello there. I'm just wondering what you would do in this situation and how you would proceed. Here we go. I live in a nice neighborhood and I have never had any issues with any neighbors. I'm a pretty easygoing person and it's rare I have issues with anybody, to be honest. This is why this whole situation came as such a shock to me. My neighbor across the street from me has three adult sons. She has a horseshoe driveway and another driveway next to that one. You can fit six cars in total, I think, into her driveway. For the past month, one of her adult sons has decided to not park in the driveway, but parked directly across from my driveway in the street. So I am barely able to back out of my own driveway. I have a six-year-old and a two-year-old. Plus, I am a teacher. We leave at about 6.45 every morning. It is still dark. And every time I pull out of my driveway, I am worried I'm going to hit her son's car. After a few weeks, I left a kind note on his windshield, asking very politely if he would mind moving his car forward or backwards so he isn't directly behind my driveway. And I explained I am worried about hitting his car in the morning. No response and nothing changed. A few days later, the woman rang our doorbell and asked my husband to speak with me. However, I was sick with the stomach flu. In response, a few days later, after coming home from work, my daughter and I rang their doorbell to try and talk this out. No one answered except her adult son on the ring camera, and he said he would talk to the owner of the car. I thanked him and went home. A few hours later, the lady came storming over to my house, screaming at me in front of my six-year-old and in our front yard. This is what she said. Fuck you. How dare you come try and talk to my son? Fuck you. Fuck you. You're a fucking Karen. I have never been talked to like that my entire life. So I am in absolute and complete shock in disbelief. She continued to scream at me and my husband. We tried to de-escalate the situation and ask her to leave, but she came up to my face and we didn't know what else to do but call the cops. Before the police came, she came back home screaming, I recorded everything, which my husband and I thought was actually a bit funny later on, as we were completely calm and polite and she was the only one absolutely losing it. The police asked if we wanted them to go and speak with her, and we decided against it, since we thought it would just make things worse. They say if she does anything else, call them back right away. This was a few days ago. Since then, her son continues to park, somewhat blocking our driveway, but he has moved his car forward. My six-year-old is completely traumatized from this situation and is now afraid to play in the front yard because she's scared that the mean lady across the street will come and yell and scream at her. She was outside building a snowman when all of this occurred. The ironic part of this entire story is that the lady is the teacher, too. Shame on her yelling and cussing in front of my child like that. What a disgrace for our profession. Anyway, I'm glad the police were so helpful and understanding. I have never been spoken to like this or treated like this my entire life. I found the whole situation disturbing. I guess I'm not looking for any answers. I just needed to vent. Sorry for anyone else dealing with neighbors that treat them poorly or make their life harder than it actually has to be. We have a neighbor on our street that has been throwing their bagged dog poop into the bushes and trees on our side yard. This has been going on for over a year, and we have easily cleaned out 100 bags of dog poop. 
We had suspected one particular neighbor, but not had confirmation until we put up cameras and caught her doing it multiple times. We debated for a while on what the best course of action was and ultimately decided to box up all that dog poop and put it on her porch with a note and a QR code leading to a video of her doing the deed. We dropped it on her porch last night and this morning it was under my tire with a note that said, get your shit straight. No clue what they were referring to. We are certain that we have the correct person and even showed their next door neighbor the video and they confirmed it was them and also told us someone had been putting bag dog poop in their truck bed. Same colored bags. Also worth mentioning that it is not just our house she does this to, but other side yards on our street have bags of crap in the bushes trying to decide how we would proceed from there. I don't want a neighbor war, but I also don't want to put up with this shit anymore. Any thoughts? This is not part of the story. I just wanted to share something funny. Me and Mama Phoenix were talking about this and we both agreed that we would take all the dog poop and catch their door open and sling it into their house, if not their car. <laughs> they deserve it anyway. Anyway, back to the story. Here's a quick update. My husband confronted the poop pitcher and her husband while they were walking their dogs today. She denied throwing the shit into our yard. And when he said that he had video, she then said that she thought it was a public property and the bags were biodegradable. So she thought it was okay to throw it in a bush. My husband said it was our property and that there have been hundreds of bags over the last year. And they flipped it and said that we were ridiculous for putting the shit in a box with a QR code instead of knocking on our door and having a conversation, asking them to stop. Is this woman delirious? You're going to leave shit in my yard and you want me to walk to your house to knock on the door? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, let me finish the story. They said if we would have done that, they would have apologized and helped clean up. Shit. Yeah, right. Anyways, they argued back and forth and my husband kept saying that they are littering on our property and they just brought up that we went to a ridiculous length putting the shit in a box on their porch. It ended with them saying for us to leave them alone. And my husband said he will call the cops if they keep it up. That is the update for now. <laughs> There's no way I'd wait for cops. I would sling all that dog shit everywhere all over their house and teach them a lesson. That's just me. What would you do? So, I've been living at this house for about a year now and have never said much more than hi to this neighbor. He's always been pleasant, though we were warned by the last tenant that he is bipolar and can get aggressive when he drinks. Fast forward to today and not 30 minutes after I get home, he comes around banging on my door, then asks if I'd be willing to drive him to the liquor store because he's been having a rough day, just totaled his truck. I get that's a shitty thing to have happened, so I agree to take him. It was only five minutes away. He's clearly already been drinking, but he's nice the whole drive. Get home, say our goodbyes, and that's that. About two hours later, here he came again, asking to be taken back again, because he finished the first pint. I say sure, but that this will be the last time I'm taking him. Get there, get his stuff, all good. On the way home, he starts going into all this detail about how he's gotten shot, and he loves more than anything in life to fight. I'm just kind of nodding along at this point. We get home, and he asks to chat for a bit longer. Sure, why not? 
He keeps going on and on about all the fights he's been in, then starts saying that I don't believe that he's gotten shot, so he pulls up his shirt and shows me his scars. He also has to poop in a bag. I ask him how long he has to have that, and he says he can get it removed at this point, but he doesn't want to because he doesn't want to live much longer and wants to go out fighting. I'm trying to end our conversation at this point, and he just keeps repeating, you feel me? And I'm like, yeah, man, I got you. To which he goes, all right, well, I'm watching your cats. We've got two indoor cats. To this, I say, thanks, I'm glad you know you're looking out for them. To which he replies, no, I'm watching your cats. I ask him what he meant, and he just says, I'll kill your cats. I don't care. I'll kill both of them. I'm shocked at this point, and he asks if he offended me, and tell me that yes, actually he did. He just said, well, as long as we stay straight and you keep your cars in order, he let me know I have a headlight out a while back, and I didn't get it fixed for another few weeks. Then we won't have any problems. I say, yeah, okay, man, and get out of my car. He gets out, and he's all cheerful again, apologizing, and thanks me again for taking him. What the fuck? I have never had a bad neighbor before, so honestly, I'm not sure how to react to this one. Hello all, myself and my partner have been living in our second floor corner apartment for a little over two years now. There are three apartments in the building, a renovated house. There is a family of five downstairs, three kids, so they make a lot of noise during the day, but it dies down at around 8 p.m. Recently, a new neighbor and his girlfriend have moved into the other corner apartment across from ours, and they have been nothing but trouble since day one. Both apartments are mezzanine, and the upstairs bedroom wall is also their bedroom wall, so the four of us might as well be sharing a room because of how thin the walls are. Two to four times a week, they have screaming matches that involve insults, threats, and a lot of banging and plate breaking. These fights usually start at around midnight and end when they go to sleep at around 8 a.m. My partner has spoken to them about it and they agreed to keep the noise down. This was almost a month ago and it has been getting increasingly worse since then. We have contacted the landlord who claims it isn't his problem. He also refuses to fix anything in the apartment, which is his problem. We generally keep to ourselves and don't like to get the police involved, but their fights have become more violent and frankly, scary. So we had to call the police. They told us that there is nothing that they can do because we don't own the property, but we insisted that they send someone one evening because it had gotten so bad. It didn't change anything in the fights and obnoxious sex at 4 a.m. has gotten more worse. Last night was my breaking point. I banged on the connecting wall that we share downstairs and the guy shouted at me to shut the fuck up or else he'd kill me. I saw red. I can handle a lot, but I cannot tolerate straight up threats. I should also mention they are pretty young, maybe 23, 24, but they drink heavy and are drunk every night and then sleep during the day. I put my shoes on and went to knock on the door. The guy answered thinking it was my boyfriend and was about to start screaming, but when he saw that it was me, he immediately got sheepish and said he was sorry and he was on the phone to the emergency services because his girlfriend was having a panic attack and then slammed the door in my face. I haven't slept in almost three days and this routine has become my new normal, which has been worsening my already poor health. 
I'm completely at my wit's end. I have no idea what to do. My partner and I would like to move somewhere, but we will potentially be waiting for a year or two before our loan gets approved. If anyone has any advice, it would be greatly appreciated. I live in France, and I know that there are laws about nocturnal noise, but they don't seem to be taking it seriously. For clarification, I live at the top of a hill and the end of a private road in California. The road is paved, though falling apart with many potholes. Several years ago, my second year at my home, my two neighbors and I patched the road with 12 tons of asphalt. No issues there and problem solved, so let me rant briefly for the background. The road is very steep, 23 degrees at the base for about 100 feet, and the remaining 500-ish feet are 15 to 18 degree angles, which I know because my wife's car has a gyroscope. The road is also so narrow that two cars cannot pass on most of it. Since the road has two lanes, it is incredibly uncomfortable, dangerous even, when two cars must pass as one person usually has to back down the steep base. Three years ago, I spent an entire summer digging out the hillside where the road runs along my property with nothing else but a shovel and pick to widen the road three to six feet for the 120 or so feet along my property. I rolled the excess soil up the road in a wheelbarrow and used it to level the far side of my driveway and then built a massive retaining wall with over 12 tons of cement, river rock, and mortar. The thing is a masonry masterpiece. My two neighbors passed by every day I was out there working and never offered to help physically or financially with this task which improves the quality of the road for all of us. But they did give me a few thumbs up and even some looking good as they passed by from June until November. So my issue is not so much my neighbors in gratitude, an oblivious mindset but that one of these neighbors rent out the back of his house and now also has another rental in his driveway with a trailer. Also, each one of these renters makes three to five trips each day up and down the road, while that is my weekly usage of the road. So maybe someone out there can help me with what I can do to prepare myself in the event we need to repave the road. This guy has lived here most of his life and said that the road has never been patched before our day job four years ago, and yet it is falling apart again. Not only that, he is putting my family's safety at risk with the frequent usage his renters put on the road, which is incredibly steep, narrow, and overgrown with shrubs and trees, since neither one of them clear their long sections of the road. Surely I cannot be expected to pay a third of the cost for a road when this guy is collecting rent money from two parties and directly responsible for the road damage. Any suggestions? My upstairs neighbors are the fucking worst. I have a nice apartment, spacious, solid enough landlord, except that he refuses to do anything about this, and most importantly, affordable. When we moved in, we were told it was mainly older and disabled people in the complex, which is true. We lived there for three blissful months until June of 2022, when they moved in. It was a woman, her boyfriend, and a set of twin boys, two years old at the time, and it's constant noise. The kids ran up and down the hallway non-stop when they're awake. They throw things, they jump off furniture. Apparently, they're just tearing apart her kitchen based on the sounds coming from there. 
You'd think it would be light because they're small toddlers. It's not. Usually, she locks herself in the back and gets high. Then, there's the screaming. They shriek and shout all the time. I worked in a daycare for three years, so I can tell they're delayed for their age. They might even be on the spectrum. I'm certainly not a doctor, but they're certainly not being helped by their mother because she's not screaming and cursing at them. She's loudly fighting with her piece of shit unemployed boyfriend. They have had so many screaming matches. They also love to call the cops on each other. Then both leave before the cops actually show up. He's basically a squatter as well. She tells him to get out countless times. He's not on the lease, but from what I've gathered from the screaming fight, he has invoked some sort of squatter's rights because he gets his mail at the apartment and can prove that he essentially retains a residence there. So, the cycle goes. She has enough of him, wants him gone. Legally has to give him X amount of days, usually seven. During that time, she ends up getting back together with him. In a few months, it happens again. Sometimes she manages to stay strong through these seven days, and he still refuses to leave. She's even sued him once to evict him and for back rent. Heard them arguing and also found it on CaseNet. Then they got back together and she withdrew her case. I don't learn this information from their private peaceful conversations. It's always from them screaming at each other. And because he's unemployed, he's up all night and will walk around all night, usually in the master bedroom above our heads. Oh, about the master bedroom. We were originally in our master bedroom and decided to move our bed into our office to get some sleep. A month later, they did the same. I strongly suspect they turned their master bedroom into a weed nursery type room. But that's a whole other story for another time. I don't really care about that, but then moving into the room above us after only a month of relative peace was infuriating. A few months later, we got tired of being kept up all night, and I went over there and told them that we needed our sleep at night and that we would be moving back into our master bedroom. I asked if they intended to move back before we moved our furniture all over again, and she said no. They still sleep in the room across the hall, but the piece of ship boyfriend paces around all night. Regardless, I've banged a broom handle on the ceiling, which has about a 60% success rate of at least a little quiet. I've talked to the landlord. He actually told me back in August that he would be evicting them and to be patient, but nothing has come of it, and I think he just said it for me to stop bothering him. I've talked to her a few times as well. I've heard some horror stories on here. So I'm grateful to say that she's usually nervous when she speaks because I'm usually livid and at my wit's end. She apologizes. Things get a little quieter enough for me to go to sleep as half the time the kids running around at night. I sense she's aggravated with me banging on the ceiling with a broom, but tough shit. I started working from home in July of 2023 and my tolerance has gone way down. They're usually in daycare during the day, but half the time I'm listening to the woman and her boyfriend fucking and or fighting. I'm exhausted, but I want to move like I want to be punched in the face. For us to move at this point, it would cost $3,000, and my rent would go up at least 100 but probably more. Has this ever happened to you? What did you do to help resolve this? So, I have a creepy neighbor. Let's call him Todd. When I first moved into my house, 
Todd just seemed like your average 50-something-year-old suburban guy. But as time went on, that became far from the truth as he progressively got weirder. The way my home is set up fits directly at the end of a cul-de-sac. Todd's house is to the right of me, unfortunately. So that's given Todd a bit of a gall, I guess. Now, here are the creepy things he's done to date. Number one, he shows up at places me and my kids go to and even my job, acting like he's just a customer or looking around. Number two, he asks my kids questions and talks to them when I'm not looking. Number three, waits until my husband leaves for work to try and come over to my house. Number four, does landscaping on my property. Nobody asked him for, but said we need to. Number five, hurries out of his house to check the mail when me and my kids pull into the driveway. But as he's doing this, he's obviously checking out me and my daughters, both minors, by the way, or blatantly hits on us from afar and blows kisses. Number six, smokes cigarettes directly in front of my house at night, staring into the windows, and will stare at our cameras too. Remember, my house is on a cul-de-sac. Why are you coming up to my house? You're intentionally walking to the end, dude. Now, the last thing he did, just did it for me. I was done. I caught him on camera looking into my daughter's bedroom. At that point, it was no longer ha-ha and funny anymore. Of course, it never was, but I couldn't just keep brushing it off. I thought I might be overthinking it, but now I had concrete proof of his stalkerish head of ways. When I saw his wife, I confronted her and told her everything he had done and showed her the footage. She was outraged. She thanked me for letting her know, and we didn't speak after that. That was weeks ago. A few days ago, Todd showed up at my door yelling that I had destroyed his marriage and told me I should have minded my own business. I told him maybe he shouldn't have been peeping into little girls' bedrooms. He stood quiet for a second, laughed, and said I made a huge mistake telling his wife, so be careful, and then he left. I don't know what to make of that. I'm thinking, what the hell's that supposed to mean? All I know is I have been really paranoid since he said that. I don't even let my kids outside to play like how they used to. I feel so unsafe now. I regret saying anything, especially after that. Because I may have ruined a marriage, but I don't know what the hell I was supposed to do. He was preying on my kids and being a weirdo. This has been weighing heavy on me. Should I have went about that differently? What should I do about what he said? I'd appreciate any advice. Hello, I, an introverted and awkward millennial woman who lives alone, unfortunately took my chance on an Essex community in California because I figured that a gated community in a tech neighborhood would allow me peace and quiet since I work from home. This is actually my second unit at this community. I originally lived on the second floor and moved to the third floor due to those neighbors' kids stomping and jumping. These jerks downstairs, however, make that kid look like a saint. They are constantly blasting their TV and audio devices so loudly that it can be heard through the floor even though I bought extra carpeting and even acoustic panels. Over the last few months, they have gotten worse and management does nothing but assure me that they've contacted the neighbors and let them know. Not to cause a disturbance, but yet they are still terrorizing me randomly throughout the day and sometimes after the 10 p.m. 
noise ordinance. I have tried recording the noise for evidence, but my Pixel 6a picks up other sounds instead. Tried contacting Legal Shield and start a case against Essex for not doing anything, even after multiple complaints and calls to their security patrol. But they told me to get the neighbor's name because they didn't want to deal with apartment management companies. Even resorted to fighting back and giving them a piece of their own medicine to get them to stop. But now it seems like they bought a new sound system and the bass is significantly louder and shakes my entire living room. Also, I'm not sure if it's worth to call the non-emergency hotlines because as shit as these neighbors are, they're smart enough to not blast their TV or music for long periods of time, especially after 10 p.m. Plus, the complex is gated. There's about five months to go before my lease is over, and I have no clue what options I have other than to wait or hope I go deaf temporarily. I moved in with my mother recently in a shitty apartment in New Mexico. Our area is known for high levels of crime. So, some of the people that live here aren't exactly the best to be around. We have a neighbor that lives above us. He blasts music all day, runs around, moves furniture, and brings girls over constantly. He does this from 9 a.m. to sometimes midnight. We recently found out he owns an airsoft gun and a shotgun. We have seen them both. And he shot a window out of the local laundromat on New Year's. He uses fentanyl, which causes him to act out and do aggressive things and act strangely. We caught him using it on his balcony, tried to report it, and were told off by our landlords that we were making up things because we're white and he's black. I wish we took photos or videos of it happening now. But he has rarely left his house since that happened. His race has nothing to do with our distaste for him. I often don't sleep because of his loudness. And while we want to bang on our walls or approach him, knowing he's on drugs almost every day and has guns, we're afraid he will hurt us. What can we do? We can't afford to move out. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true, crazy neighbors from hell stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a very special shout out to the reform members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, Colt Stone Wolf, Mrs. Innerscare, Lust Crispin, Tammy Slayton, C.A.G., Denise Sess, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty Sneeze. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all. <laughs>